After some shaky development, Metal Gear's latest in a long line of epic titles is finally here, and it's called Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Which, can I just say, is not a real word. Metal Gear is known for introducing new gameplay techniques with each instalment. However, this game takes probably its most dramatic shift by making combat sword-based. It may not be the kind of Metal Gear game that fans love and recognise, but personally I think it's absolutely fine for a game to go in a completely different direction when it's a spin-off like this. Yeah, I think fans will be divided, but having said that, it'll probably bring a whole bunch of new people into the franchise as well. Let's get to our experiences. Set in the year of 2018, four years after Guns of the Patriots, cyborg technology is everywhere. While the larger private military companies have been destroyed, smaller rogue and criminal groups using cyborg tech for their own gain are rampant. Enter our hero, Cyborg Ninja Raiden, who fans will recognise from Metal Gear 2 and 4 with flowing locks and a smoky eye any girl would envy, not to mention a flair for the dramatic. I mean, he is nothing short of fabulous, Bajo. He's also brooding and deadly. Just about every part of his body has been replaced with some sort of cybernetic substitute. When faced with a foe he can't defeat, he simply gets more robot parts, which creates a kind of Darth Vader-y foreshadowing of what he could become. Combat is fast, combo-based sword play, but it's far from a button masher as there's loads of different aspects to the action. Stringing together light and heavy attacks, timing counters and slides all make for exciting, well-paced fights, broken up with probably your most powerful attack, blade mode which I like to call slow-mo slice and dice. Yeah, it's basically bullet time with a sword. It's also well implemented during a fight. When the limbs of larger enemies become weakened, you can use blade mode to target them and leave them all Monty Python and limbless. Slow-mo slice and dice can also be used to literally slice missiles and large objects out of the air, as well as an annoyingly specific selection of doors. You'll also pick up a whole range of different types of grenades, missile launchers, rocket launchers, which are particularly handy when faced with a winged cyborg or a helicopter. If you don't have a rocket launcher handy though, fear not, you can just jump from missile to missile like stepping stones to perform a mid-air copter takedown. Brilliant. I thought so. There's also some fancy customizations you can make to his suit. Oh, I want a robot suit so bad, Hex. New weapons to unlock and skills to learn. And how you spend your points is all depending on how crazy you want to get with your fight style. The more skills you learn, the more combos there are to remember. But low spinning, whirl attacks or ground slams really open up the fights and allow you to be creative. Health is restored with little repair modules and you also get some to restore your energy meter which is spent any time you enter blade mode. General light and heavy combos will slowly build up your energy meter, but you can also get an instant health and energy refill by performing an AVP-style spine-ripping finisher. Later on, when Raiden starts to lose it a bit, you also get a rage meter to give you an extra edge. Combat does appear a little messy because it has so much going on. It doesn't lock up the camera view on you to keep a clear view of all the crazy flips and spins you'll be doing, and sometimes this means you do get a bit turned around. I did struggle with the camera a little bit. Yeah, I did too, but I think it's well worth it leaving you with that freedom because, well, to be fair, I noticed it more looking back on the game footage, but when I was in the moment, I was still very focused on the action, even if it was a little chaotic at times. I do like that this game doesn't do anything small. It's all <laughs> big and brassy and balls out. <laughs> The combat feels really fluid. There's lots to do and it keeps you moving through at a great pace. Plus it has all the signature touches that no Metal Gear game could be without, such as its highly advanced stealth techniques. Everything is very over the top and melodramatic, but you know, nevertheless, I did start to get quite drawn into it and, and I began to look forward to those intense confrontations. I think it's time for Jack. Deliterate. Plus, this is a game that doesn't take itself too seriously, which I think is fantastic. 
Yeah, I love that. And the ridiculous cheesy music underscoring each boss fight. Time to leave them all I have to say, though, I did really like the way the story developed. I mean, dialogue does start off really one-dimensional. I will kill him. No, don't do it. This is what happens when you bring a tool to a sword fight. But later on, once Raiden starts to face some pretty intense inner turmoil over his true nature, his moral obligations, and his tortured past, the whole human versus AI conflict becomes really engaging, particularly with the introduction of his AI companion. As for AIs, we adapt as we learn. Just as any intellect operates, man or machine, altering the course of mankind is not above my divine directives. I guess that's a relief. Yes, he was wonderfully philosophical for a robot dog. Better than this kid, whose accent was so thick that even his subtitles needed oh. subtitles. They pack us all a bigable dirty container. Next thing we know, we're here at the Jumbi Lab. There are some frustratingly long and boring phone conversations, however. Every time you finish a fight, someone's calling you. All right, let's get started. Let's recap the route you will take. I could not see. I know you can skip through it, and a lot of it is just a cover loading, but leave me alone, German guy. I've got stuff to hack and slash. <laughs> so what's the verdict? I mean, for a Metal Gear game, this is a pretty big departure, but for me, it was a welcome one. Yeah, I think there will be a lot of Metal Gear fans who just don't like it outright, but there is a lot to like here, so I'm giving it 8 out of 10. But the more I played of this, the more I enjoyed it. And, you know, I don't have decades of snake-loving Metal Gear fandom behind me the way some might, but for me, as a spin-off, this was worth a 9 out of 10. Adios, amigos.